teachers, we are in Genesis still, and this lesson is lesson number nine. It covers Genesis 11, 1 through 9, and uh, covers the story of um, the Tower of Babel and uh, God's dispersal of um, mankind, the disbursement of the nations. And uh, we're going to see something pretty incredible here in this text um, as we look through Genesis chapter 11, 1 through 9. The, the theme really to me seems to be um, obedience, obeying God specifically. And we can see here in our objective statement, it says we can see that obedience is God's desire for mankind um, by comparing the competing plans in Genesis 11 uh, chapters 1 through 9. Uh, the first thing we're going to see is man's plan, uh, mankind's plan, and it, we see that mankind's plan is their own glory. If you look over at um, chapter 11, verses 1 through 4, it says this, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. These would be... Um, the children of Noah's uh, progeny, of course, as they began to do what God told them to do last time, to be fruitful and multiply, they would continue to be, to grow. And it says that the whole earth, you see all these like inclusive language. And in fact, I'm going to put this up on the screen. You see all the places that I marked in yellow, whole earth, one language, one speak, they, 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 they us, they, they, us, 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 we, you see that, uh, they're marked on, on the screen. You're going to see it there. Um, it's all talking about mankind's plan, what they're trying to do together. It says the whole earth was one language and a one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the East that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick uh, for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Kind of an interesting, you see in the first part, the verses one and two, you see their circumstance. Um, the circumstance was that they had one language, one speech, they were together. They went east towards Shinar, and they dwelt there. That's the location. You see that in verse 2. And then you see their plan. In verses 3 and 4, they have, you see go, this word go to. That's an interesting, that's an interesting word. Um, it gets repeated later. They say go to, and then later God says uh, go to. Kind of an interesting thing. Um, we'll see that in a minute. But their plan is to make brick, and to build a city there, you see a city and a tower whose top may reach the heaven. And then you see kind of their plan and their own glory for themselves. You see it in, uh, there in verse four. Let us make us a name. Let's make our own reputation. Let, let's let's uh, make much of us. Let's make much of who we are. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. They do not want to disperse. Now, um, that's that was God's plan to they want, he wanted them to be fruitful and multiply and to fill up the whole earth to, to be scattered. And that's not what they want to do. You see here that they are not willing to be um, obedient to go to, 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 to scatter, to go out to where the rest of the earth. So we see in verse five, God's plan. And that cover, that shows us down through verse five to seven. Um, man's plan is for his own glory, for his own unity, to, not be scattered, but to be together. And then to try to get to the top, to heaven, try to get to God, to try to go up um, kind of in their own way. We'll get to heaven in a tower is basically what they're saying. You find in verse five, though, you see God's plan and God's plan is for righteousness. He wants righteousness. He wants obedience. Look at verse five. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the Lord, the children of men builded. So you have here, this survey, God comes down. And I don't totally understand exactly how that is, but he does. He comes and sees it. Verse six, and the Lord said, behold, the people is one and they have all one language and this they have begun to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. So God here gives an assessment. There's a survey, then there's an assessment. Um, they're just going to keep doing um 
sinful behavior. They're going to keep doing whatever they imagine to do. That word imagine kind of um, reminds me that what it says later, every um, imagination of their heart was only evil continually. Kind of a similar idea here. So God says a plan and he uses, interestingly, that same word us that they used before. The man said, go to let us. Now God says, go to let us. Kind of interesting. There he's talking about the Trinity. Um, he's talking to himself, um, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go to let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So God has this plan and he executes that plan in verse 7. And then we see that executing exactly what God wanted back down to verse eight, the God's execution. Um, here is the plan gets executed and disbursement, which plan wins man's plan or God's plan. <laughs> it is a, it is a bad idea to go against God. And it says here in verse eight, so the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. And they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel. So you, you see in here, you, you see scattering. He says the Lord God scattered them abroad. He's trying to get them to leave. They leave the city. And then you see confounding. Part of how he scattered is, is confounding. Um, verse 9, therefore is the name of it called, the name of the city called ba Babel. Um, you'll notice, I'll show you here on the screen again. They talk about in verse 4, a city and a tower. In verse 5, God comes to see the city and the tower. And then you have them leaving the city, and they call the city uh, Babel. It's where they come up with the word Babylon, the Tower of Babel. Um, the word the word battle, uh, Babel just speaks of uh, uh, exactly what it sounds like, babbling. That's where we get the same word. It's just they're speaking, and they can't understand each other. It's just it's gibberish. Um and that's what happens. They get confounded. Somebody's speaking and they can't understand them anymore. They used to understand everything they said. Now they can't understand it. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. That's why it's called that. And from thence did the Lord scatter them from that Babel, from that city, up abroad upon the face of the earth. Um, here you see this importance that God, God sees in language. Uh, language has the ability to unite. Uh, language has the ability to, um, to uh, language is powerful. Our words are powerful. And these people are together. Um, they are able to express the imaginations of their heart. They are able to, um, you have this kind of a communal thing going on. We're going to do all of this together. And, and they're going against God's plan for them to go and disperse and to fill the earth. They're trying to stay in one place. Um, instead of, um, getting to God and his own. <laughs> Ow. Gosh. That hurt. Okay. Instead of getting to God in, in the, in the way that he wants them to get to him, they're trying to get to him on their own. And so, um, you see here two words, you see, man's word. Hey, this is what we want to do. And then you see God's word. This is what I'm going to do. And God's word is the one that remains. And, uh, and so you have this, this, um, interesting story. Um, there's a lot of implications. Um, of course the importance of language, the importance of our words, the importance of getting to God on his terms, um, seeking after God's plan and being obedient to his plan and to his word. He has a, he has a plan and we got to trust him and do what he wants us to do. And so you see man's plan. If it's for your own glory, that's a bad plan. Uh, we need to, we not need to do, not do whatever's in our own heart and the imaginations of our heart. We need to do what God wants us to do and get his word into our hearts so that we live that out. And, uh, and God seems to be interested in getting us to go. And that's what he does here. And so um, I hope that helps you. That's a way of thinking through that text. And I hope that it can impact the people in your class this Sunday. Have a great day. Bye.